All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the AR-1-1 November Lima and the first ever demonstration of the gyro warning system. What this system does is it lets you know when the gyro is about to enter into flapping risk, and it does so with a little auditory warning. The first one that it does is you may have some botched takeoff where somebody gets here, they set the aircraft like they're supposed to, begin the pre-rotation process, And everything's going normal. Get the rotor up to 2,000 RPM. That's the gyro warning system turning on. Again, the gyro warning system here is designed to tell the pilot about flapping risk. And it does so with two warnings. But it can do so for multiple reasons. One of them being if you pre-rotate it to too low of a rotor RPM, you let go and you gun the throttle and keep the stick forward. It comes in. Flapping risk. Flapping, flapping, flapping. And that lets the pilot know that, hey, flapping, you're botching flapping, things flapping. up, you need to abort your takeoff, just like I did right there. I kept the stick forward and I apply the brake. That's one of the common accidents you see in the gyroplane system and the gyro warning system help counteract that. Next common mistake that usually happens is pre at too low of a rotor RPM and then trying to initiate the takeoff roll. This can happen in many scenarios, for example, like here at the fly-in here at Benson Days, we have a lot of gyroplanes who are trying to move around right now. And again, I may feel rushed to take off. So again, I start my pre-rotation process before taking the runway. I go ahead and increase the rotor RPM all the way up. And let's say here I see that I have a nice hole. I go ahead and let off the brake. I continue my pre-rotation process. Wachula traffic, yellow jar 1 November Lima, taking 1A for departure, straight out departure, runway 1A, Wachula. And again, I only get the rotor RPM to 160. I pull the stick all the way back and gun the throttle on like I'm supposed to do. Slapping. There's the flapping risk. And you can see, I control the aircraft and I get it back to where it needs to be. Then I initiate the takeoff. Flapping, flapping, flapping. And I can fly out nice and normal. So you've seen how the gyro warning system can actually tell the pilot when he has botched his takeoff and when he needs to abort his takeoff. But you're also wondering what else does the gyro warning system do? Because there's other dangerous situations where we can get into rotor flap also in flight. The gyro warning system helps handle that. So let's go ahead, let's clear the area, make sure that there's nobody out here. So one of the things that can happen is you can get behind the curve on landing. In other words, this is a high rate of descent situation, something you don't want your students getting into and you want them to abort from. Again, you can see here, I have improperly managed the aircraft for a descent. I brought it back to 45, I'm pulling the power out, and I'm keeping the aircraft too slow. Behind the curve. I'm getting a warning behind for them the behind curve. the curve, meaning I don't have enough airspeed behind for my approach the to the runway right now if I was landing. Behind the curve. If I take it even Watch further into a vertical for descent. The curve. One eight for departure. Watch behind the curve. Max power descending. And you can see now it's telling me that I have entered into a vertical descent that I can't even escape with full Max power. power this means I need to recover at this point. Max so power I drop descending. the nose, let it recover, come back in with the throttle, and I fly myself away from danger. This is what the gyro warning system is meant to do. It's meant to help you in those critical flight situations, like the takeoff and landing approach phase. It can even help me here. Let's say I get behind the curve on takeoff. I pitch the nose up way too high. I start climbing, I start losing airspeed. The gyro warning system can sense this, and it'll tell you, hey, you're behind the curve. See? Behind the curve. I'm trying to climb the airplane at way too slow of a speed, and it tells me that. Behind the curve. Behind the curve. Behind the curve. So that way I can go ahead and start pulling the aircraft back into a normal flight condition. The other issue you can get with gyroplanes is you can get somebody who ends up chasing the uh, controls. In other words, they do pilot-induced oscillation. This is dangerous because of low-G maneuvers, and the gyro warning system, again, will tell you about this. So, for example here, I'm actually going to push this over to 0.6 Gs. I'm watching my rotor RPM as I do this. I'll pitch up, and then I nose it over. 
low G bunting risk. See, there's the low G bunting risk that this tells me about. If I pitch up, nose it over again. Low G bunting risk. And then I can come back again for another oscillation. Low G bunting risk. And so the gyro warning system can sense all these situations and let the pilot know when he has executed a maneuver improperly. That way they can go ahead and execute the recovery and help save themselves. The other thing it can also tell me is as I'm coming in for approach here on runway 18 in Wachula. Wachula traffic, yellow gyro, short approach, runway 18, Wachula. It can tell me if I get behind the curve. In other words, I pull the stick back, I get too low on airspeed, and it starts telling me. Behind the curve. It's saying, hey, wake up, you idiot. Behind the curve. And then I'll get into vertical descent. Behind the curve. Max power descending. Meaning that I need to recover. Bunt, bunt, bunt. That's the other low G maneuver that it can tell me about. It can actually tell me when I'm in a bunt situation. There you go. This concludes the demonstration of the gyro warning system and its capabilities and what it can do.